A prescriptive easement is a lot like taking over land from somebody else. At first glance, many people equate prescriptive easements to stealing, because it is acquired not by paying money, but rather just by acquiring it without permission. A better understanding of what is required to establish a prescriptive easement and why it's even allowed usually calms that sentiment. A prescriptive easement is defined as an easement created from an open, adverse, and continuous use hostile to the true owner's title over a statutory period of time. You may be thinking, what? This definition sounds like blah, 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 blah. However, it is a concise way to articulate why it is difficult to get a prescriptive easement over another person's property. If you want to establish a prescriptive easement over someone else's property, you have to be using the property in some normal kind of easement way, like a pathway, driveway extension, garden, etc. So therefore, you can't put the monster truck there for right now and just plow through somebody's yard. As an example, assume that you have a driveway on the edge of your property that runs alongside your neighbor's property that happens to have been put in place on what you thought was the border, but turned out to be five feet on your neighbor's side. This use must be open and notorious. Well, this means that you cannot conceal your claimed easement from everyone, especially the property owner. So running across the back of your neighbor's yard at 2 a.m. in the morning, only when you find out for a fact that your neighbors are on vacation and could not possibly find you out, would probably not count as open and notorious use. The example of the driveway, however, is apparent to everyone. The next important qualification to establish a prescriptive easement is the use must be adverse. What this means is that the use must be done without permission from the owner. So in our example, the driveway along the border of yours and your neighbor's properties, your neighbor cannot tell you that she knows that the property of the driveway is on her land, but that it's okay for you to keep that driveway there. If your neighbor does this, then she's given you permission, and your claim is no longer adverse to her interest. This does not mean, however, that your neighbor would have to know about your use, only that they cannot give you permission. Finally, the use has to be continuous for a statutory period. This varies depending on what state you are in. Continuing use does not necessarily mean that it has to occur every day or every week. In other words, continuous use is not the same as constant. When it comes down to it, a court will most likely have to decide whether or not the use occurs often enough to be considered continuous use. In our example, the drive along your property border with your neighbor, the use would most definitely be continuous as the driveway is there every minute of every day, and you use it on a relatively regular basis. Thus, if you put in a driveway on what you thought was your land, but that land later turned out to be a neighbor's land, and used the driveway for 15 or more years, odds are that you have gained a prescriptive easement in that portion of your neighbor's land that the driveway sits on.